Hello all, in this video you will learn how to calculate a proper sample size for your research even if you have no previous experience. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Nuran Hamza, a freelance biostatistician holding a public health master degree in epidemiology and DPH in biostatistics. So why ABINFO? Why I choose ABINFO? ABINFO is a free software designed for the global community of public health practitioners and researchers. You can easily calculate your sample size, develop a data collection tool, and analyze your data and create records. So today I'll show you how to do to download the ABM for 7 and what are the required information for sample size calculation. Here we are. How to download the ABM for? Here's the link. Okay, I'm gonna highlight it. Put it on the CDC site. Here is the site. Just scroll down. You have multiple options to download the EBN for either you want to download it on your laptop or PC or to download it on your mobile. Clicking here. It will start downloading. Okay. Just press here. Okay, and it will start your download. Just double click on launch AV info or create shortcut on your desktop. Double click on the shortcut. The AV info interface appears here. You have multiple options, either to create form, enter your data, create maps, stat calculation. Those other two options, I'm gonna explain it later in other lecture. Okay, for today, we will use this option, stat cap. From here, you will choose if your research is just a survey, cohort or cross-sectional study, case control, or whatever your research is. So, what are the required information you have to know before calculating your sample size? First of all, you have to estimate and define your target population from which you will withdraw your samples. There are some standard values. 0.05 for alpha, 0.8 for the power, and you should know the effect size. Percentage of exposed and unexposed groups. How you can, you can get those values? Those values should be based on previous literature. You should do a comprehensive literature review and and set your values based on your research. If the previous literature doesn't contain the proper values, okay, or, or just it can't be applied on your samples, so you will use your best guess based on experience. So what are the alpha and beta errors? Okay. When you set your research question, you have a null hypothesis. For example, there is no association between caffeine consumption and elevated systolic blood pressure. So, you have four options. Either to reject the null hypothesis, which was actually false, or <coughs> fail to reject the null hypothesis that was actually true. 
These are two correct options. But if you reject the null hypothesis and it was true, this is type 1 error. And also, if you fail to reject the null hypothesis, but it was actually false, this is type 2 error. This is a real survey. Okay. A survey on community pharmacist perception and practice regarding dispensive medication without prescription. So, now our research design is a survey. We'll open our AP input and choose population survey. Our estimated target was about 7,000 farms. Okay. The expected frequency was at this 50%. The acceptable margin of error was 5% which was the alpha of 0.05 as it was a simple random sampling so the effect size remains one and the cluster remains one while the countess level is 95% the sample should be 364 Thank you for listening to this brief video. Don't hesitate to ask any question. Here is below the video. I provide you with the PowerPoint presentation that contains much further details.